drink more water sean c aka the black eric foreman back in the building coming at you with another album review and today we have macklemore's brand new album gemini is coming at you with his second studio album from the label bendo if you don't know who this guy is you're, you're probably living under a rock for the past three to five years he's released a lot of hit songs like thrift shop and uh can't hold us songs that put him on the map as a very distinct figure in what i would define as this subcategory of rap which is what a lot of people would say is pop rap i mean he's been very controversial in the media for not only his uh songs about white privilege but also some drug abuse that doesn't define who he is though because he does doesn't let that stop him he just gets stronger from that point on and he needs a thumbs up for that but I'll be honest with you this album was probably the most so-so piece of material I've heard this year nothing about it really grabs me or, or stands out that much I like the fact that the features on this project are really well placed the vocalists all do a great job ranging from Kesha to Dan Kaplan to, to Donna Massal all helped to convey the subject of the songs that they were on in a really impactful way in a way that Macklemore might not have been able to do on his own I think the biggest thing about Macklemore that I will have to give him credit on is the fact that although he is uh, labeled as a rapper he's probably one of the more classier versions even though he does exist in the less respectable form of rap that form being pop rap where people don't really take you seriously you're allowed to take on subjects at any point in your career and not really face backlash because you're not really deeply engraved into the hardcore version of rap uh, the version that people require extensive lyrics from so what is it about this project that has me feeling so 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 and, and iffy although the features are well placed and there are a couple of songs in here that I actually do like one of the jazzier tracks on here levitate where Macklemore although he is a uh, really cheesy on this track is kind of endearing the way he tackles the subject how to play the flute is cool and uh 10 million isn't a bad track on here either although it feels like macklemore is trying to do something that he's just awkward in it's still a decent track and like i said he does do better than the average uh, rapper who we would get on this type of production but the rest of this track list is just like who did it and why? This is a classic definition of where a producer and an artist can go wrong because Ryan Lewis and Macklemore need to be together in order to keep making some entertaining music slightly. Macklemore, when he's not paired up with Ryan Lewis, just looks like he's so uncomfortable or sounds so awkward on a lot of the tracks that he's hopping on. You know how Future has Metro, uh, DJ Mustard has YG. They have chemistry of the producer with the sound that fits the artist and the artist knowing how to ride the sound because he trusts the producer. Yeah, we don't really get that on this project. He just sounded so much more authentic and confident when he was working with Ryan Lewis. This whole album, it just feels like he's begging for approval from the world of pop and from the world of rap at the same time. Like, am I good now, guys? Am I good? Am I good? I'll mention your favorite rapper in this song if you give me a thumbs up. He does this over and over again by unnecessarily mentioning rappers who never even talk about him and talking about old things just to get people to feel this sense of nostalgia. Macklemore is just awkwardly placed on a lot of the rap tracks specifically. Like, he's trying to fit into a place that clearly has no more space. Like, I don't really think we need... Uh, more pop rap and while there are certainly some tracks on here that Macklemore does better as opposed to the rap cuts I would say the major issue with those tracks for me isn't the fact that they exist on this body of work It's the fact that they already exist somewhere else just in general uh, A bunch of these tracks just sound like renditions of other artists and other songs The major issue with some of the tracks on this project is the fact that the songs sometimes don't do the subject any justice Like you're just literally exploiting what it is that you're talking about because it's relatable or a lot of people go through it You don't really feel this this way yourself and if you do it's pretty much unnecessary because the same song feels like it's been done better by somebody else like corner store it sounds just like a chance the rapper rip off macklemore sounds way too awkward on a house track it's like he just tries to narrowly fit himself in just to make sure people know hey guys this was my idea uh no it wasn't i like miracle because of how much dan reminds me of frank ocean when he's singing on the chorus but the thing about the track that also proves my point is the fact that it sounds exactly like Waves from Mr. Prob. Hopefully it's just inspiration or a credited sample. Over It is another example of Macklemore uh, having no depth in the subject that he's rapping about. I would rather live in hell than to get comfortable sleeping alone. That seems just a little bit over dramatic to me, especially considering how surface level the rest of the track is. Not to mention that the track sounds like it didn't make the cut on the Fifty Shades of Grey soundtracks. I love the way Donna's voice sounds on this soundtrack and how easily it ties together the, the dramatic effect that's being given to it by the instrumental, which is why I instantly picture a Fifty Shades of Grey scene. But that honestly isn't even the worst of it. I skipped some of the most cringeworthy songs 
this year. First of all, we don't even need to talk about Marmalade because that's just why. On Willy Wonka with Offset, I don't even feel like he fully utilizes Offset because Offset just feels like he's bringing a gun to a tea party. And Macklemore sounds like the male version of Pink when he's singing the hook on this thing. And then on Intentions, it's like, I can understand why people say he exploits certain uh, cultures or demographics. Dude literally says, I wanna be a feminist, but I still watch porno. As if watching porn somehow makes you a sexist what are you even what i want world peace but i want to watch world star like i'm sorry this is the worst of your struggles internally and this is also where i say macklemore's features tend to tie the song together more than he does because the chorus always explains the track a little bit better than he tends to it just makes him sound like a fake uh social justice warrior i guess my biggest issue with this project is the fact that macklemore is intentionally trying to give you a deeper look or a closer perspective into his life while giving each topic of discussion this safe space. All of these tracks are formulaic in the sense that they're all seemingly trying to be anthems or radio friendly, all while trying to exist under the world of hip hop slash rap, which doesn't necessarily make him come across as all that sincere or believable. He's like a Disney Channel rapper in the sense that he is so censored when talking about certain details, but still trying to make it seem like he cares so deeply about all of these things, which I don't doubt. He's just doing it in a way that's just so gimmicky. Uh, that being said, a lot of these tracks on here are still kind of forgivable because they are kind of endearing. Some of them are a little cheesy, yes, but it's not all bad. Like, I could probably enjoy Levitate. I could probably enjoy uh, the, the Chance to Rap a Ripoff song. I could probably enjoy Miracle. Because despite the fact that they are not organic or that original, uh, they do still exist. And because they remind me of other tracks, I can enjoy them for that period of nostalgia. I gotta give them credit because a lot of these tracks come across as very classy. Some even consider it. Like, uh, you could probably play this uncensored in front of your mom and you wouldn't have an issue. There's really no point in discussing all the corn that Macklemore has to bring to the table because I've accepted that he has this ability to be extremely corny a long time ago but the thing about macklemore is it's as if he knows he exists in the world of pop rap he's not really trying to go against it he's actually taking advantage of it by uh making these tracks so formulaic because because all of them are pretty much radio friendly it's a really safe album where macklemore tries to go a little bit deeper into his personal life or into his struggles uh, and he just holds back intentionally so the album could probably be more popular. A little bit more shareable, a little bit more viral, a little bit more friendly. It's just kind of an album that wants everyone's approval while still adding nothing to the conversation. Even without Ryan Lewis, the thing is produced pretty well. Yeah. Other than that though, I got a lot of enjoyment out of Levitate. I got a lot of enjoyment out of Miracle, uh, 10 Million, How to Play the Flu. Even Good Old Days with Kesha was pretty nice. Is Kesha getting better or is it just me? And I really hope he's not speaking for all Geminis when he's talking about the way he explains himself on this project. Macklemore, Gemini. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you enjoyed the album. I uh, hope you're still having a great time listening to it and finding the appropriate setting for it. As for this guy, I'm out. Black Eric Foreman. See you next time. Peace.